This Ag News Update brought to you by American Implement, dedicated to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, Kansas Sorghum's Jesse McCurry. When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. And that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rural way of doing business. So when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. Joining us, Jesse McCurry, who is the executive director of Kansas Sorghum. Uh, uh, Jesse, always great to catch up with you. How are you today, Ken? It's, we're moving into the never-ending zone of Zoom meetings. It seems like this is kind of the, the new way of uh, doing things in the communicating, but uh, this way we can stay socially distanced, if you will. But uh, lots of things going on in Sorghum, and, and also uh, uh, quite an honor for you. We'll talk about that as uh, our interview uh, progresses. But maybe let's first uh, tackle uh, a few days ago, USDA had a report that came out that showed planted acres, uh, that what Kansas farmers uh, uh, did and are expecting to, to have come fall. And uh, after a couple of year decline, sorghum acres uh, are up now in Kansas. We are up indeed, up 6% from last year. It looks like for all purposes, we're estimated at 2.75 million acres, and that's positive. It's interesting that report has gotten a lot of attention, obviously. I didn't realize this until later today on some of the unplanted expected to be planted portions of it, but a lot of double crop going in in the area. It's interesting to see where that might shake out. A lot of soybeans, but we're happy to be up in sorghum. Right, and I think that's one of the things that talking to farmers as the wheat harvest uh, really got going early. There was a lot of speculation of maybe some double cropping. And now as it's gotten to the central and working its way uh, up through the rest of the state and with those uh, week or so 100 degree temperatures we've had, uh, maybe some, some second thoughts, but it would seem to me that if that soil profile is there, the sorghum would be a, a great way to uh, try to get some in with those varieties and those, some of those short seasons that, that, that you could maybe gain an extra crop. Yes, we've been trying to push that message out, Ken, particularly the sorghum checkoff on double crop considerations for grain sorghum is certainly worth a look. As you mentioned, it sounds like the the soil is, is good in terms of the lower profile, but a little bit up top um, is starting to get drier. I was a little surprised on the drought monitor to show it looking pretty good in central Kansas. Um, starting to hear some complaints and it doesn't take long with these hot dry winds and 100 degree temperatures to make things look a little tough. Let's also talk ethanol. Uh, that is uh, uh, coming back and the sorghum playing a big role in that as well. Yeah, it's interesting to see how you know, we, we do respond as drivers and, and how much uh, we how much less we were driving as we were zooming more and uh, certainly would like to see people try to, to get out on the roads and try to, to help heal some of these ethanol plants who've really had a, a rough go of it. As you know, sorghum on average is about a third of our crop goes into ethanol and it's a very important part of our industry and, and for those communities. Jesse McCurry is executive director of Kansas Sorghum. He's our guest this week. Let's take a break and we'll come back with more in just a moment. Day and night till the job is done. Teeter is the one that works for you. Fields of green reaching toward the sun. Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter is the one Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter Irrigation, your source for water management. 
Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future. Our guest this week is Jesse McCurr, Executive Director of Kansas Sorghum. And uh, Jesse, a, a few days ago as well, you uh, received an appointment to a, a important committee that will have a direct line, if you will, uh, to the uh, Environmental Protection Agency uh, Director to uh, make sure that uh, he's aware of what's going on and, and the needs and concerns uh, of agriculture and, and especially sorghum. So uh, I guess first, congratulations on that appointment. And, and, and I guess, what, what does that mean? Well, thanks, Ken. I think it's a good example of if there's an opportunity, try to take a shot at it. Didn't necessarily know that I would make it in the final cut, but I was fortunate to have made it as, as well as another Kansan. And I'm excited to learn so much and to, to meet some of the other folks around the country involved in different segments of agriculture. You know, it's unfortunately at times EPA touches an awful lot of our operations lives from a number of perspectives. I've also already been reached out to by KLA and some others to, to get firmed up on some of the issues that they're dealing with. But generally, it's an advisory board. There's a lot of advisory boards like this across federal agencies. Um, with COVID, it'll be interesting to see if we actually have an opportunity to go to DC in person, but I know there'll be a couple meetings a year. It's a couple year appointment and it hasn't been very active recently, this committee. So I, I applaud the administration for giving agriculture interests across the country a chance to weigh in and particularly with sorghum, as you know, is a little bit of an interesting uh, animal in terms of where it's grown and the issues that it faces and its opportunities. And so I'm, I'm excited to learn and be part of it. Well, we look forward to hearing more about uh, those developments, what happens, what comes out of it, and, and maybe not only what you learn, but can share with the other folks around the country that have the administrator's ear. Well, Jesse, in our, in our remaining moments, let's uh, uh, turn our attention back to, uh, to sorghum and that export market. Uh, you know, China obviously is impacting all of uh, agriculture exports, and then sorghum definitely uh, is back in with that mix, and, uh, and U.S. sorghum farmers very happy about that. Yeah, sorghum exports are hanging in there and that should be reflective in your local basis, uh, certainly at, at terminal elevators and at some of the local elevators. I know we've seen that on old crop. I would sure like to continue to see that strength in a new crop. You know, every week we're watching those numbers. We had a flash report from USDA last Friday, which is a uh, was a great sign for some, some added sorghum sales to China. In fact, we're working with the U.S. Grains Council this next week on a a video Zoom presentation with Chinese buyers to help make sure they understand where we are in terms of growing conditions and, and, and staging and, and how our producers are feeling. But generally speaking, we still have a great product to offer that's competitive around the world and we want to see that continue to hang in week to week. All right, Jesse, if folks want to know more about what's going on with Kansas Sorghum, give them that website that they can follow along. Yeah, um, come see us on our website at www.ksgrainsorghum.org. We're also on social media. Um, reach out to the office and call which and um, stay tuned. We're, we're pretty active out there on Twitter and, and all the other uh, venues. And I'd love to see pictures, especially if, as guys are out there and are willing to share that along. Jesse McCurry, Executive Director of Kansas Sorghum has joined us. Stay with us, we'll have more in just a moment. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your touchstone energy cooperative. 
s and Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas. It's where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all-new, all-aluminum Mauer Grain Trailer with all of the electric options, the easy-to-load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the West location, you'll find bumper pulls, goosenecks, and oilfield specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. s and Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web. But remember, you do have to spell out the end. 1030 KBUF brings you agriculture information every market day, ag news, markets, weather, and more. You can also be social with us online on Facebook as well as Twitter. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching.